Hi, welcome to the Quantity Surveying Studio. In this video, I'll be explaining a complete construction process as per a FIDIC contract. So let's move into the video. Now this is a basic timeline of an entire construction process as per a FIDIC contract. So it all starts with the issuance of tender documents to the different contractors. So the client or the employer as the FIDIC suggests, employer is the one for whom this project is being made and they issue some tender documents to the different contractors who will be competing against each other for the best price that they can quote. So what the different tender documents are, I have already explained it in another video. The link to which will be shown in the top right corner. You can just click on it and understand the different tender documents. So once the tender documents are issued, the tender period begins. The date on which the court needs to be submitted by the contractors to the employer. So that is called the tender period. So 28 days before the submission of this tender is called the base date. So what is a base date? The base date is a date on which if at all there are any changes in law or legislation after this base date, there might be some increase in cost due to these changes so based on this date, some indices are prepared, some cost indices are prepared and some calculations are set out in the FIDIC contract based on which the contractor can claim for increase in price. So another important aspect about base date is that if there are some rate of exchange being done in this project, for example, this project will be quoted in US dollars, but the project will be carried out in some other location, maybe in Gulf, in UAE. So the amount that is being paid will be in terms of dirhams. So if there is no rate of exchange being mentioned in the tender documents, so whatever rate of exchange was prevailing during this base date, that will be used for the entire project for the payment like for the conversion of the rates. So whatever the rate that is determined by the central bank of that country on this particular base date will be used for the entire project for the payment of the local currency. Now another thing regarding the base date is before this base date all the data regarding the subsurface then the hydrological environmental conditions of the site all these data needs to be submitted to the contractor so that they can get a clarity and do a proper quoting of the project. And even after the base date, if the employer is in possession of some new data regarding the site, that also needs to be submitted to the contractor so that there is proper clarity again and they can use this data to improve their quotations. So once the submission of tender is done, there is a time gap wherein the employer will go through all the courts, do negotiations and finally a contractor is selected to carry out this project and to this contractor a letter of acceptance is issued. So this is basically a formal letter mentioning that they are awarding this contract to this particular contractor. Let's say it is contractor A. So based on this quotations, based on all the neg after the negotiations, a uh, contract an amount will be finalized between this contractor and the employer and all this amount and the date to be completed, the completion date, all these details will be mentioned in this letter of acceptance and this will be a formal letter issued to the contractor, contractor A. So once contractor A receives this letter of acceptance within 28 days, that is before 28 days, a performance security needs to be submitted to the employer. Now again, what a performance security is, I've explained it in another video. The link to which is being shown at the top right corner of this video. You can just click on it and understand what performance security is. So before 28 days, this performance security needs to be submitted. So after that, the contractor will make themselves ready to start this project. They will start staffing of the people mobilizing people. If they require any advance payments for the mobilization, they will need to submit an advance guarantee so that the employer can pay an advance amount. And the employer will also start making the site ready so that they can give possession of the site to the contractor and they can start moving in and begin the work. So once everything is ready, a date is finalized on which the contractor can start their execution of the work. So once the commencement date begins, 
there is a contractual completion date contractual completion date so this is the date that is mentioned in the letter of acceptance so this is called the time for completion so normally within this date the contractor has to complete and hand over the project but as you know all construction projects there are delays happening so in a real time scenario obviously a delays will happen it can be from the employer side it can be from the contractor side so based on that some delays will happen and during these delays some extension of time can also be claimed that is a whole new process how you can claim for the extension of time the cost for this extended time that is basically being claimed so for that there are different steps lots of documents needs to be prepared the delay statements to be made then the planning program needs to be updated and based on all these final extension of time is decided and the cost the total cost that is incurred during this time is also prepared and that is a whole new process i'll try to make a video on extension of time later on so once after the delays finally the project is completed and finally the test on completion is carried out and once that is successfully completed a taking over certificate is issued to the contractor by the employer so in this taking over certificate the employer can mention regarding some completion of works there might be some works that needs completion there might be some rectifications needed so all these needs to be done during the defect notification period so during this period all the defects that is being noted by the employer is explained to the contractor some works that needs completion there might be some partial works so all these are noted down and needs to be completed during this defect notification period this period is also mentioned during the contract signing usually it is for one year and it can also be extended so this time this usually this gap is one year but this can also be extended the extension cannot happen more than 2 years for more than 2 years so within this period all the defects and incompleted works need to be finished off and once that is done finally a performance certificate is issued to the contractor by the employer and this is the final certificate of completion and once this is received within 21 days the performance security that was initially submitted needs to be returned back to the contractor by the employer so this is how a construction process happens so during this time for completion all your monthly payments all your inspections all your variations any claims all these happens during this period and whatever happens between these periods the timelines for that i've already explained there are two videos which i have made fedic timeline 1 and 2 again the link to which is being shown here i'll also be putting all these links that i've explained in the description so that you can go through it so hope this video was informative and in a short video you understood an entire construction process that happens when the contract is fedic so please do like this video if you have found it to be useful please don't forget to subscribe to quantity surveying studio for more informative videos like this thanks a lot for watching take care bye